another episode of D's Fight Reactions. On today's episode, I'm going to be reacting to Mike Tyson versus Pinklin Thomas. He's rated number one. Pinklin Thomas was a. He was a good fighter. Yeah, ranked number one. Yeah, he was a former champion of that organization. So this dude had this dude had the uh, had the skills. The one thing you also noticed back then, particularly with fighters, was uh, most of them came up boxing. So you still see a lot of boxing skill with those fighters back then. It's different now because you have a lot of guys, especially in heavyweight, that are... Uh, well, for a period of time, you had guys that box as an afterthought. Like, you have some, even some that I know personally, that, like, you know, maybe they were former pro football players or something that because their football career ended, they, you know, stepped away from that and, you know, needed something that was going to make them a lot of money, so they decided to take up boxing. Because the one thing about boxing is if you're a heavyweight, you can make a lot of money, pick up a quick three to $5,000 even for, like, a, 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 a short fight because, you know, they pretty much think that you uh, – Mike Tyson. They, they, it's almost like a guaranteed knockout, guaranteed action. So they love watching, um, watching heavyweights, watching the big guys throw down. Angelo Dundee's his trainer too. So yeah, Angelo Dundee didn't just uh, train anyone. So Pinkman really, really had some goods. For Angelo Dundee to be uh, in your corner means that. He saw that you had something. Defeating Bone Crusher Smith. Pinklin Thomas is going to try to move side to side. Avoid bending forward using that left jab. Here we go. You don't waste no time. He's come out. Yeah, there was no filling out time with Tyson. Tyson just came out and just tried to kill you. It's like almost like... It was a big change. It, it was so different the way Mike fought because he was boxing. And we had seen that peekaboo style before, even with Floyd Patterson and Jose Torres, who Custom Model also, also trained. But you didn't, it, it, the best that ever did that peekaboo style, in my opinion, was by far Mike Tyson. Ooh, dude just cracked, man. And again, as he always said, he threw with bad intentions. He is literally trying to kill you, trying to hurt you. Ooh! Jab hook. And Pink, Pink was trying to box. He's trying to box, he's trying to use that jab. But Tyson's power is just so devastating. Pepping out that jab. That's the right thing to do, but the dude it just hit so damn hard. Like he walk, he just, it's almost as if like Pinkland Thomas's punches don't even affect him. Ooh. The head movement. Ooh. This is, man, this dude was just. Ooh. That's the thing, when you boxing and you used to skills and you're displaying skills and somebody comes in whose rhythm you can't pick up, it's difficult for you. It's always difficult. And usually you figure out a way to adapt to it, but if somebody hits that damn hard, you can't deal with it. And I know, oh shit. And I know guys who have sparred Tyson. Maybe after this fight, I'll tell you uh, probably the uh, best story I've heard about somebody who sparred Mike Tyson and, and, and was describing to us about how, how hard he hit, you know, how effective his power was. It's not just that he's heavy-handed. He's not just hit. He's hitting you a lot. And he's hit. And again, that was a good combination. 
That was a good combination at the end. But I know between rounds, you didn't hit that hard. You were literally in the corner wondering, like, what the hell is all that? Angelo, tell Angelo to be quiet. Jesus Christ! Angelo knows what he's doing. No, you're nothing. Angelo knows what he's doing. Damn. Damn. That was a good combination. Three, four. Slip. No, this is Bob Weave, actually. That uppercut. It's like Tyson's not even worried about getting punched by Pinkland Thomas. That's a dangerous guy to deal with when he's no, in no way, shape, or form worried about your punching power. Hit whoever's in there. Tyson used the jab, but it was like solely to get inside so he can just destroy you. Short punches. Good combination. Ooh. Damn. Pinklin threw a great combination, actually. And Mike responded with that left hook that just neutralized everything. Ooh. He's giving him, he's doing, he's giving his effort, man. He's in the fight. And again, he ain't went down yet. He ain't no bum. Like I said, he wasn't no bum. You got to be tough with a name like Pinkley. I wonder if that's his real name. Like did his parents really name him Pinkley? That's probably why he became a fighter if, he, if, if they did name him that. I can only imagine going to school with a name like Pinkley. Especially black neighborhood shit. Yeah. So Pinkman's doing decent this round because he's landing some shots. But every time Mike lands, it's like it's more, it's more effective. Like when he hits you, you stay hit. As the old saying goes, damn. Yeah, this is a that's the thing. With Tyson, you you can't. You can box him, and like once his athleticism kind of waned, it was effective. But back in the days, you had to fight this dude. This was a fight. This was a bona fide fight. That movie's getting got a little sloppy, then he started to pick it back up again. You tell Mike is just trying to. Get him, get Pinkle into a position where he can just really open up. Still give Tyson that round, but Pinkle didn't do too bad in that round. He didn't do too bad in that round. He, he landed some, he landed some decent shots. He landed one really good combination, but again, Tyson just neutralized it with that hard hook to the head. As a boxing trainer, I like hearing how the trainers deal with their fighters in the corner. One of the things you want to do is make sure they can get 
you calm. Make sure they calm everything. down and First, get the rest everything. that they need. Because, yeah. again, the they're going back out there. The and you need them to be as rested so they have as much juice as they need to be out there. And you also got to know who you're dealing with. Some fighters react to, you know, a tough love. Some react differently. You got to know what your, what your fighter reacts to. The right idea. Jab and move. Boxing. Because Tyson, that's a dude you like. You'd have to take in the deep waters. Even though even in deep waters, he, he could be pretty good. But you have to take him in deep waters. You can't, you really can't engage with him. But you kind of have no choice because he gets in so well. Time he touches him, Shanklin's like, I gotta tie this dude up. He just hit so damn hard. You even notice with Mike's expression, like he sees that opening and he gets hungry and he just goes for it. Like his expression changes when he sees those openings. That's a nice faint. That's a nice faint. slightly differently because I noticed Tyson had a tendency to slip to the left first. When I was boxing, my my habit was slipping to the right, then to the left off him just because it just kept me more balanced. I fought a style somewhat similar, uh, kind of a combination of uh, 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 Tyson and, and Joe Frazier being shorter than most of my opponents, well, shorter than all my opponents, okay? I don't remember ever fighting against somebody that was uh, either the same height or, or, or that I was taller than. So again, me constantly having to get inside, even though I have long arms for my height, but again, when you shorter, you gotta fight an aggressive type of style. As my trainer used to tell us, it's like you're trying to get on the porch and there, the taller fighter's trying to keep you off the porch. And that's what Pinkman needs to do. He needs to keep him off the porch. But he's trying to do it. He's trying to do it. But you can tell the body punches are wearing him out too. So Pinkman's not having a horrible fight. He's not having a horrible fight. He's in the fight. He's got go, but, but, but go first, go first. Don't lay he's still, every punches. time, he's, every time first, Mike is landing, okay? it affects him so much that he can't do anything but immediately tie him up. He's trying to butt the heck out of you, you know what I mean? It's all right. I want you to go first with everything. He got the right he idea. Up and you go for yeah, try to wear his gas tank out. So again, Pinkman knew what he was doing. But so does Tyson and so does Kevin Rooney. Oh, that was a nice jab. Hey, he knew, again, this is good. This is a good fight. He's a good fight. Yeah, you don't win a belt because you some bomb. Especially during that time. And now Mike can even, even get more angry. You can tell he's just, he wants to really fight now. Mike had that tendency to square up, but with that peekaboo style, you almost can't. It's almost impossible not to square up. And that worked for him. Ooh. The only thing I don't like that I'm seeing from Tyson at this particular point was 
because he hits so hard, as he starts to get tired, he's starting to look just for one shot to get it done. But one shot can get it on nice and quick. And the scary thing about Tyson is he's still, still that strong. That's a good combination. Ooh, better combination. He's starting to kill that body. He's starting to kill that body to, to like bring the head, bring them hands down. That's back when Mike had whatever that, it wasn't a part, but something right there on the top of his head where his skin was exposed. And a taller fighter seeing that, he's going to jab at that because that's a target. That's going to be his target. Ooh! That was a nice hook. It didn't land flush, but it landed. Yeah, no shit. That's good. Yeah, he, Pinklin is fighting. He's fighting good. You actually starting to see with this fight what would be effective against Tyson. As you saw later on in later years, uh, what like uh, especially Lennox Lewis used to uh, that was extremely effective against him. Even though Mike at that point was a, only a shell of what he what he was, but it was effective, and especially for somebody like Lennox Lewis being six foot five, uh, much bigger hands, just a far superior boxer uh, than Pinklin. Uh, you, you were seeing what was going to beat him. Mike is in superb shape though, because he's he's not breathing extremely heavy. You could tell as a fighter, he's still got a lot of juice in him. Michael, you have a great jab. You're not using it at all. I want to see a snappy hard jab. You're not fighting this guy. We're going to fight. We're going to fight it. We're going to bullshit. Huh? We're going to fight. We're going to bullshit. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Yeah, I hear what he's saying. But he's throwing combinations, but he's kind of he's looking so much for the big shot because he knows he can hurt him. He knows he can hurt him and take him out. He's just looking for one shot to get it done. Because he's probably every time he's landing, he's feeling it. He's feeling like I'm landing with everything, and I know it's just a matter of time that I'm gonna land that one shot is gonna make the difference. Five rounds in. Sneak the right hand that time by Pinklin. That left jab in the face. This is what Thomas really needs to be doing. Ooh. He's got to double up with the control of the right hand. Might have some tricks, too. He had that little slip and that little sneaky kind of uppercut jab that he threw in. Pinklin's getting a little lazy with that jab, and he's leaving. He's leaving this, that, he, right under his the left arm. He's leaving the ribs exposed because he's leaving it out there kind of lazily. He boxed pretty well in the last couple of rounds, so he's probably feeling like he's uh, doing better than he actually is. But you got a deadly man in front of you, man. That's not somebody you ever want to sleep with. People don't realize how much being tangled up and like 
wrestling in there, how much of that wears you out as well. Especially if you got a guy that knows how to lean his weight on you and wear your legs out. He's still got his speed. Now he's trying to box. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like the, you're making him angry and he's getting stronger. I'm like the Incredible Hulk. Ooh. Oh, that one hurt him. That hurt him bad. That got his attention. That was kind of a game changer right there. Ooh. Ooh. That's kind of a kidney punch, but ref don't see it. It counts. <laughs> Yeah. Mike knows, he can tell. You can, a lot of times you can tell by the way your opponent's breathing where they're at. And I think that's what ties to the scene. Ties like, he's getting tired. He's, I got him on. I got him right where I want him. I've done that where you, like, just to, based on the way a person's uh, reacting to your punches, you can hear how much breath is coming out of them. You can tell how tired they're getting. Yeah, the pink was being successful when he's boxing and when he's um, strictly boxing, you know, not trying to engage with him, but boxing. This is the same trick right here, the, the splitting of the gloves, the same thing that uh, Angelo Dundee did uh, with Ali, I think Ali versus Henry Cooper. Who, um, yeah, they're talking about it right now. He did it when Ali got hurt. And, he's, and, he, and uh, he was hurt. Like, Ali was out. And he split the glove to give him a little more time to rest so that he could come out there fresh and recover from, like, uh, from him getting hurt. So that he, he knows what he's doing. It's a little trick. You know what I mean? But, again, he's, he's looking to take care of his fighter. I don't think he's going, you know, with this guy, against this guy, I don't think it's going to make that big a bit of a difference. Although a lot of times, and I've seen it recently with a friend of mine who uh, recently had a, had a fight, um, he's winning a fight and really was on the way to knocking the guy out. And before the last round, they had to switch gloves because, uh, and in doing that, it kind of slowed down the momentum and uh, uh, kind of took, took my, uh, my friend out of his rhythm and it ended up being a unanimous decision, but uh, he didn't get the knockout. Yeah. But I think with somebody like Tyson, that that might make him just okay, even more mad. He's starting to land. He's starting to land a lot more now. He's starting to find his target. Ooh. 
you hear the sound. There's a different sound to his punches. That's the bad place to be. You got to get back and start jabbing again, Pinkman. Ooh, ooh! That's his combo. Ooh. He's going to go for it again. That's what he does. He's going to go for it again. Oh, he's starting to, yeah. I told you that jab was out there being lazy. Oh! Damn! Damn! He's... Woo! Shit! He's... Once he found an opening, he just went for it. He just went for it. Jim Jacobs. He, Pinklin still fought a good fight. Of the people that lost, oh, there he is, Don King. Stepping in. <laughs> I'm trying to get in his ear. Hook to the body. Uppercut. Boom. And right at this stage now, Pinklin Thomas, you can see his knees start to buckle. And from that stage, it was just about curtains. Here it is. Boom. There's another angle of it. Ooh. In the left hand at this stage. Piglin Thomas is all through. You'll see him crumble down to the canvas and punishing left hook, and that's it. At this stage, his eyes are out, his hip yeah. will go straight down. There's the left hand, solid. There's the I'm only thing about the Tyson hook. that would he was really he gets you in trouble, he throw technique right completely out the window and just try to kill you. The two left hands. He just try to kill you. From up above, the left hand. Right, not Ooh. too heavy, but a vicious left hand, and it's Shit. all over right here. Peglin Thomas is gone. Yeah, but he still fought a good fight. I gave him credit. And again, he was willing to step in there against the reigning heavyweight champion of the world. Again, we're waiting for the official announcement from. Yeah, I want to see what the official announcement was too. Ladies and gentlemen, the time. Two minutes of the sixth round. Six rounds. Referee Carlos Padilla stops the bout. The winner by a TKO and still TKO. WBC, WBA, heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike, Mike Tyson. Tyson. Uh, I had a friend named, uh, uh, I don't want to say his name again. He's, a, he's a, uh, another boxer. Um, but uh, he was a heavyweight. Um, he's a trainer now, a really good trainer. But he was he was a sparring partner uh, for a lot of uh, heavyweight champions. He actually had the opportunity to spar not just Mike Tyson, but uh, Lennox Lewis and Evander Holyfield. And one day we were asking him um, what it was like, you know, sparring uh, each one of them. And he was telling us clearly he was like, uh, well, out of out of all three, Lennox Lewis was by far the best boxer. You know, he was just, his skill of boxing, He Lennox just had it. And again, Lennox being that big, it was always hard to deal with. He said that uh, Evander Holyfield was by far the toughest. You know, he he was tough. It was it was you know hard uh, dealing with them because he was so tough and you know uh, the dude was a true warrior and you really had to go to war with him. But the funny thing about that conversation, uh, again, we asked him, and when he's talking about all three fighters and when he's talking about Lennox Lewis, he's and and Holyfield, he's kind of talking about it with this uh, you know kind of a lightheartedness. But when he started to talk about Tyson, his whole mood changed. That's the thing I never forget. His whole mood changed. He was like, he's like, yeah, Lennox was by far the best boxer. Uh, Holyfield was the toughest. 
But he's like, but man, and this is literally what he said about Mike Tyson's punching power. He said, it's just not right how hard that guy can hit. Those were his exact words. It is just not right how hard that guy can hit. And I've never, that's the best story I've ever heard about. I've heard other stories. I've heard the story about uh, another friend of mine who um, who was a spawn partner against Mike Tyson. He said Mike Tyson, when he hit him in the arm, just, you know, out of spawn, he said it felt like his whole arm had died. You know, this dude was one of the most devastating punchers in the history of boxing. Um, while I will not never give him the uh, aspect of being the greatest boxer, of all time, not even the best heavyweight of all time, because there's others, in my opinion, who've done, uh, who've far surpassed him. Particularly the two guys, uh, uh, two of the guys, I say, that that beat him. I will say that Mike Tyson is by far the most exciting boxer in, of all time. He's the most exciting boxer of all time, and again, he was just a joy to watch. And um, during that time, during his reign, it, it, it was something. So there you have it, Mike Tyson versus Pinkland Thomas. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you do enjoy it, please click subscribe and let me know some other fights you want me to review and look at and react to. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.